just dig into the accident for a second. Scary on track accident at uh, Brands Hatch. And yeah, it was a you, good one. But yeah, it was a good one. It was a good one. Yeah. You tore up your ankle. You tore up your feet. Yeah, both. Yeah. Uh, you tell the story of an amazingly humorous moment when you're still on the track amidst the rubble. Yeah. Can you set the scene for us? Well, again, there was there was a, there was a lot going on around me, but I wasn't sort of aware of what was going on. Uh, in my little, my little bubble. And when, when the crash happened, it was a guy called Greg, Gregor Wojtek, who'd always been crashing. The race was stopped. The first part of the race was stopped because Gregor crashed into Roberto Moreno, who was a Formula One mm -hmm. driver as well. Uh, then on the restart, and this is the only thing I wish I'd sort of done something different. I, at Brands Hatch, there's like a dip where pole position is, and I was on pole position. So I thought for the restart, I'd park it slightly up the hill. So when I moved, it would be straight. And it just, I got too much wheel spin. I went down the dip and I ended up being third into go, going into the first corner. But I wasn't worried because I had a 12 second lead when the first part one of the race was stopped. So I had this 12 second buffer basically. So I had no, no problems that I would still be able to sort of win the race as a two part. Um, and then we clash wheels, Gregor and us at the second corner at Druids. Then I got in front of him, and he, he, he got a good drive as he went through 30s onto the Grand Prix circuit. So I, and I knew if I place the car in the middle of the track, he's not going to be able to go left, he's not going to be able to go right, because he's going to have to go on the grass. But he just kept on going on the left-hand side, went on the grass, clipped my rear wheel, then it just turned sort of really sharply left. And unfortunately, the way that Brands Hatch is on the Grand Prix circuit, there's a bridge that sort of links the inner, inner field. Uh, to Druids and where the bridge is, the, the Arbco normally on a normal racetrack would just go, sort of go down the hill, up the hill, and then you go through Hawthorns. But where the bridge was, it went around the bridge, then came back and then carried on going. But when I got sort of turned left and where the, the Armco came out, I just hit the Armco head on and it, then it just ripped off the front of the car. Mm. My legs were hanging out the front and it span around and then unfortunately I went head on on the other side with my legs hanging out and it all sort of, everything stopped, didn't feel any, any pain. And then I remember opening my eyes and all I could see, the way you're in the cockpit, was just the top of my knees. So the fir first thought was from, from the knees down, both have gone. So I just remember sort of going, right, knock me out, knock me out, and then gas on my face and everything else. Then I remember sort of, as I speak now, I can't actually remember it, but I know I said to them, my engineer, when they finally got there, I said, yeah, is the spare car ready? Get the spare car ready. <laughs> so, and this is where, and what, what it was, my, my left foot is basically hanging off. Um, my right foot, my heel is actually around the side. My toe was sort of, sort of ripped off on the left-hand side. Um, <clears throat> But I still somehow I sort of kept my kept my humour because I sort of thought, okay, I've lost my legs, but everything would still be okay uh, the next day. So I went to the to the to the hospital. I remember um, realizing, I think after the operation, when my legs were on the on the hospital bed, they were covered in band bandages, but they were red. But it was my feet, so yeah. I knew my feet were still there. And then I was on morphine, I think, for that first week, and then I went through this weird stage that I was under a waterfall naked with my wife or my wife to my girlfriend at the time but uh, under a waterfall beautiful everything else having a nice cuddle and everything else and then suddenly like our uh, skins were like banana skin when you peel the banana the skin came off and then we ended up being these monsters that then ate each other and then we reproduced and I open my eyes and it would stop and I close my eyes, and like in a dream, you can never really go back to the same place in the dream. Close my eyes, and I go back to the same place where all these bloody monsters are eating each other. And then eventually I had to be taken off the morphine. Yeah. Because it, was, it was getting a little bit, again, a little bit strong. But uh, Don't do drugs. Don't do you know, <laughs> Morphine, you've got to do it. If you're in that, that predicament, that's got to happen. But then I never had this, never had this doubt that I would stop racing. When I knew they were still on, my feet were still on, I knew then I had to sort of work very, very hard to get a chance. I got my contract sign, I think in, oh, was that was August, September, I think October, I got the option taken up. I was still in a wheelchair. My legs were still sort of stuck out like this. But that helped because that allowed me then to sort of work 
towards getting that first race you had a in, purpose. in Brazil. I had a purpose to do it, yeah. So, wow. And it was, it was bloody painful, but I'm glad I did it. Wow. So.